top five lethal running backs coming back in 2023. You know, this kind of came out of I was just like doing, you know, the open and trying to find highlights and looking at guys who are who are back this year. And it is unfortunate that the running back position gets so devalued when it gets to the NFL, especially coming up this year. There's some really good like it was hard to get to five in this list this year in, in college football. Hmm. Like I could put Frank Gore Jr. on this list and not feel bad about it at all. Uh, that that is, Southern is, Miss, he's 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 back. He's he's pretty dang good. Okay, you know? uh, but I I did pick five, um, and I did leave off Bucky Irving from Oregon, and that was a tough one. But I did bump him for personal bias. Number five, Trey Benson Kansas as a running back. No, <laughs> you know Trey Benson in Florida State uh, will be the bell cow for sure this year. Um, and uh, really came on and, and dominated towards the end of the year. So much so, Treshawn Ward uh, transferred to Kansas State. Uh, not only uh, is he excellent in the running game, he's a great receiver and uh, returns kicks. So he will be someone to watch in the ACC this year. Trey Benson uh, really dominant towards the, the end stretch. And uh, really, his explosion on the scene was the, the reason for Florida State's winning streak. He and Jordan Travis kind of together uh, at the end of the year uh, because he was just so uh, reliable and, and then at times dominant. Yeah, a uh, good player, great get from Oregon. Um, everybody seems to have come from somewhere nowadays, mm -hmm. right? Uh, before they they establish themselves, it almost feels like everybody got to double check who's been where and, and all of that. So yeah, I came over from Oregon after a year and uh, the second half of the year, like basically November, he started lighting it up, man. And, uh, you know, posting 100-yard efforts after 100-yard efforts, got in the end zone a lot as well, and finished with a really salty year. And, you know, yeah, that propelled him into the off season. And he's probably not, uh, you know, mentioned as much as his quarterback or maybe some others on that team, but he's right up there near the top of the list for reasons why everybody's so excited about them. Yep. Number four. Rocket Sanders from Arkansas. This is a guy I, I fell into a hole watching highlights of him. And I'd, I'd seen him during the year, uh, obviously, but uh, seriously fun to watch. Um, is one of those guys who can kind of do it. You know, uh, you need four yards, he can get you four yards. You all of a sudden need 42, he can get you 42 as well. He can go for, for 80, he can do all that. He's fantastic to watch. It should help K.J. Jefferson out in what feels like his 14th year uh, starting at, at Arkansas now. With that new offense, we'll see how much it changes. I doubt very much. But he, if Arkansas is to take a step forward this year, it's going to be very much uh, on the back of Rocket Sanders. Yeah, I mean, uh, this isn't Kendall Browse anymore. It's Dan Enos. So, yeah. you know, there is going to be some change there. Uh, to what extent, you know, we'll wait and see. But, yeah, I, at first I was like, who's Ra – I was like, oh, Raheem Sanders. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, great player. Uh, put up big numbers. Uh, and you're right, man. The K.J. Jefferson thing is just like, how much eligibility do you possibly have left? I mean, how is it possible he's coming back for yet another mm -hmm. year? But – he is, and, uh, you know, that bodes well for, for the Razorbacks, uh, you know, hopefully, potentially for them. Uh, but I am very curious to see them uh, with the changeover in offense and really I, as much, you know, interested to see what Kendall Browse does at TCU. That's still very weird that he is there now and will be calling plays for the Frogs. But, uh, yeah, Rocky, Raheem Sanders is a great player. Number three, Blake Corm at Michigan. Uh, the only reason he's this low is I don't know how healthy – he is going to be to start the season. But if he is healthy, and that gives him that one-two one, punch of, of him and Donovan Edwards, that is going to be absolutely fantastic uh, once again for the Wolverines. And they make J.J. McCarthy's life so much easier, and he's an excellent quarterback. I, I think he might be, if I do top five uh, quarterbacks, he's probably on the list uh, as well. But Blake Corum, and then to go along with Donovan Edwards, it – to me, and I know they have good wide receivers, it doesn't even matter who they are because they're going to be able to run the ball down most people's throats all day long, and that's how they've beaten Ohio State these last two years. Yeah, he's just so good. And, and again, that Edwards jumps in while he's hurt and runs for a bunch. <clears throat> Not enough against TCU, but – I really like Blake Corum. Would he be in the NFL draft had he not been injured? I wonder. I don't know about his yeah, eligibility. I, so. yeah. I don't know if his third year. But uh, tough. Edwards was good. Uh, I'm, I hope Blake Corum's 100% when he does get back. Well, I mean, Michigan didn't really need a whole lot of help offensively in that game. <laughs> no, <laughs> you're right. That's right. Um, it was it was as much getting stops uh, there for both parties to try and, and seal that one for the Frogs. But, um, yeah, I mean, awesome player, obviously, was in the Heisman consideration. 
Um, you know, there was a scuttlebutt about what will he do at the end of the year, but the injury just, I mean, that, that was a bummer. And uh, hopefully he's, he's getting healthy and close to 100%. I haven't checked in in, in a while on where exactly he is. But, uh, yeah, hopefully he's good to go from the start of the season. And uh, if, if so, then I'd imagine he's going to be right up there in those same conversations next year. So there's two better than him, huh? Yeah. You want to talk about knee-jerk reactions? Two things. The TCU playoff game. Think about Graham Harrell at Purdue and Phil Longo at Wisconsin opening up their offenses a little bit more because Mm -hmm. now you've seen what Michigan is maybe vulnerable to. And we'll see if if Jim Harbaugh, uh, how he adapts to that uh, as they're going to see more and more teams running uh, the spread. Number two, Quinshawn Judkins from Ole Miss. True freshman last year was absolutely fantastic. Had to share the limelight, uh, of course, with uh, Zach Evans. Uh, And, but... Every time, and this this dude is, and they've got another. They've got this year and next year with Quinshawn Judkins at Old Miss. Uh, whatever quarterback he's taking the ball from, he's certainly going to help them out. Uh, already built. I mean, you know, he gets off the bus already as a true freshman. It looks like he's he's you know twenty six years old, and just ripped and cut, and kind of that that Adrian Peterson type of already big and ready to go once they get there. Uh, one of the I, you know, I don't know if I'm going to put him. Yeah, I guess I will because I know who the number one is. I think he's going to be the number one running back in the SEC this year. And there, there's going to be a lot of good ones, but this dude is going to be the guy in the SEC. Now, I don't know how good the rest of Ole Miss is going to be if they're going to take that step and contend for the the uh, SEC West, especially with LSU uh, up there uh, with as much as they're bringing back. But Quinshawn Judkins is, he can ball. Yeah, Zach Evans was kind of an afterthought there, and it's yeah. not like he didn't have like a you know a, a good year at all. I mean, he put up some some good numbers, but uh, just Jukins was the highlight reel for them, and he was the the the, the main name uh, that you knew and that stood out to you in watching it. But yeah, he's a really great player. I want to feel I want to say, and I I feel like I was listening to this just like a month or so ago, but it was Lane Kiffin or, or something along those lines talking about you know having to. As much as he's the portal king, also having to watch his back for his own guys, because you can imagine there's probably some people ringing or hitting the DMs of Quinshawn Judkins to get him to come play for them too. Uh, but yeah, he's a he's a really good player and uh, big things in store for him and only should be more so. I don't know their exact running back room arrangement at the moment, uh, but yeah, Zach Evans leaving that obviously leaves a bunch of numbers open as well. So yeah, he should he should thrive. Do you have something, Garrett? They got. They have a Ulysses Bentley too. This is Bentley really from SMU. Still, yeah, yeah, really yeah, good. He came over and he just. I, 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 that that was puzzling to me. I, I have no idea why he did that. Honestly, I, I mean, other than just wanting to play in the SEC, and if that was it, like okay, that's totally understandable. Or if you got some NIL or whatever. Um, you just wanted to play somewhere else. Like maybe you broke up with your. I don't know. Like I'm well, sure he what had. What about a, Dykes leaving? There's that. I got. I, I'm just saying. Whatever the reason was, I just I, that was kind of puzzling yeah. to me because he was. Pretty well set up in SMU's offense, but yeah, it could have been Dykes leaving, and and that was all that he needed. But uh, yeah, Jukins is a is a badass. I just I also think though, like when you make that decision, and you've got Zach Evans and Quinshawn Jukins in there with you, maybe there's other. If you want to play in the SEC, he's good enough to where he could have gone to you know almost every other school. Yeah, mm-hmm. but he could have had a million reasons, and I, yeah, I just yeah. but that, at the time I was just puzzled by that because of and Dykes might have been the biggest reason, but at yeah. the time I was puzzled by that because he he had pretty well established himself with the Mustangs, but. Yep. And number one, Braylon Allen from Wisconsin. My God, this guy's fun to watch. And will be interesting to see him um, in that new offense. You know, it's not going to be it, – it is a misnomer that it's not a running offense because it has to be. But um, I think part of the reason, you know, Tanner Mordecai, he threw a lot of interceptions in the spring game, but he does throw some interceptions. But I don't think Braylon Allen was really logging the time, <laughs> you know, they don't need to know what Braylon Allen can do in the spring game. They know. They can rest him up a little bit. I think this is going to be really fun to watch with Wisconsin this year uh, in that new offense with Braylon Allen and opening it up the way that they do. Uh, and this is a guy who was already in that you know power running offense, dominating anyway, and he's going to have probably more space to move because of the spacing of that offense and how Phil Longo's um, you know air raid type scheme will go. Well, and, you know, with Mordecai there, he's kind of a guy that can run. Not You don't want to do that too much, but I wonder if that helped. Braylon Allen will help Mordecai. Obviously, Mordecai is going to help as well. Wisconsin, that's going to be fun to watch. I, I, I look forward to the change in the offense and what those two do. Well, that's the whole idea, right, yeah. is uh, make it fun to watch and hopefully score a lot of points. And uh, they, you know, had a good place to start off with with their running back right here. Uh, so, yeah, he's a – 
I keep saying, I mean, all these guys are great players, but, I mean, he no doubt is. Had a big year last year and, you know, certainly some huge expectations. But, uh, yeah, I look very much forward to seeing uh, our old buddy Tanner Mordecai being able to hand off to this guy and, and throw him a, a pass here and there as well. But, yeah, he's, he's, he's a great player. I saw this note on Ulysses Bentley about it was a crowded SMU running backs room. This is according to a story on Pony Express. <laughs> what was so he goes Miss? to Ole Miss with Judkins and Evans? Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, – that's, Just like yeah. I said. It was puzzling because of the numbers, but Sonny Dykes, that alone would be enough reason to go, even though it's not like they brought in some defensive-minded head coach to replace him. They brought in Rhett Lashley, who you know I feel like is going to have a pretty good offense for whoever's you know toting the rock for you. But, yeah, that's – that's a little funny. Uh, uh, the crowded room at SMU yeah. to go join <laughs> Judkins and Evans. Evans. Well, yes. well, you know, sometimes, though, college or kids say some weird stuff. I sure, remember yeah. one time. No, that wasn't we, a quote. We, no. we interview. Oh, okay. We, interview a, uh, we interviewed a kid who had committed to Baylor in 2016. And my first question was, well, you're, and this wasn't Jalen Peacher who stayed. This was somebody else. It's, and it, I, I said, uh, you know, you've committed to Baylor, you know, Knowing what's going on, what made you want to keep that? And he's like, "Oh, the coaching staff." And yeah, no. So can I? Yeah. So can I look at each other, going, "I don't That's think he, I don't think out. he knows." Yeah, this wasn't <laughs> this wasn't like a coach had been fired. It was the entire so, so, scandal had played out, and he was <laughs> yeah. like just unaware of the. God like, bless it, young. I mean, man. I wish I could be that young and just out of out of tune with what was going on. I mean, I'm sure you'll get some arguments over like the placement here for like you know. Play Corm over Braylon well, Allen or whatever, but I mean, like that's to be expected with any list, and it's your opinion after all. But I mean, those are five great running well, backs right I, there. I did leave off Will Shipley. Paxton noticed it, and the reason I did because you're a hater. I did, There's no, some no, names. No. Yeah. no, no, I, 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 I think hater. Clemson's offense failed last year when they forgot that Will Shipley was there. He was yeah. on the bench, but I do want to see him. He was not the the lead running back last year. He was kind of the change of pace guy. He's fantastic, and if I I put my number one Swiss Army knife in there. Will Shipley's number one. So All that's right. why. Thank you, Katie Raider, for the super chat. Good to have everybody.